Good afternoon, everybody. I'm MJ with BEG Controls, and today we're going to talk about some of the features on BEG sensors that really set us apart from our competition. All right, let's begin. Once again, we're going to be covering the major unique features of BEG Control sensors versus our competitors. We'll start with the photocells. Every BEG model includes a photocell. It's a standard feature and we provided it no extra cost. Now our competitors, in most cases, it's an optional feature that you actually pay extra for. Other times, it's only on select models. So we provide it at no extra cost on every sensor and it's available whether you need it or not. The lens, this is really the key component in a passive infrared detector that determines the overall coverage area of the sensor and its ability to detect minor motion. So let's take a look at our lens versus the competitors. Our lens on the left, the competitors on the right. Now really pay attention to the segments or cells in each of these lens. Look how much bigger they are on the competitors. On the BEG sensor, we have much smaller cells and they're arranged quite a bit differently. This allows us to have a much larger coverage area and also the ability to detect minor motion much, much easier than our competitors. This becomes very obvious when you look at our coverage pattern. BEG shows coverage three different ways, walking across the detection area, walking directly towards the sensor, and then a minor motion area. The person on the left is walking across the detection area. It's very easy to detect motion that way, which is why it's the largest area. Obviously, you're moving from one cell to the next very easily. Now walking directly towards the sensor, and an example of this would be walking down a hallway towards a sensor, it's much harder for a detector to pick you up. You're not moving between those cells near as quickly as you are walking across. And in fact, with some of our competitors' models, you're almost directly underneath the sensor before it's picking you up. Then we also show the minor motion area in orange. We place this there so we can assist our specifying partners on exactly where to place the sensors so it's picking up minor motion like typing or turning your head. This way we're placing the sensors in the exact spot that they're needed. Now let's talk about vacancy sensors. Or in our case, we've added a feature called auto manual switch. Now, for those of you who don't know what a vacancy sensor is versus an occupancy sensor, an occupancy sensor automatically turns the lights on when you walk into a room. A vacancy sensor requires you to hit a button or a switch on the wall to manually turn them on. This is done to increase energy savings and to comply with a lot of the energy codes across the country. To add this feature, we've done a very simple thing. We've simply added a switch on the front of our power pack that allows you to switch it from automatic mode to manual mode. So when it's in auto mode, lights automatically come on. When it's in manual mode, you have to hit the button on the switch to turn it on. Only a few of our competitors have this feature. Most of our competitors have separate models for vacancy sensing versus occupancy sensing, so you really have to pay attention that you're getting the right model of sensor. With our solution, any of our low voltage sensors can be vacancy sensors or occupancy sensors at any time just by moving this switch. Now let's move on to our advanced dimming features. BG has done something unique. We've added zero to 10 volt output directly from our power pack. We're the only company that has dimming right out of the power pack in a non-network traditional style sensor setup. Now this gives us two advantages. First, it allows us to use those photocells that we put in every sensor to do very advanced daylight harvesting. So we can keep a constant light level in the room. But this also allows us to use that momentary switch that we mentioned to manually control the dimming. So we can turn it on, off, or press and hold and raise it up and down. Now our competitors only have specific models with photocells in it, and that's the only way you can do the dimming. If it doesn't have a photocell, you don't get dimming. Also, the majority of them that do offer dimming do not have a way of manually controlling it, so you're just using the daylight harvesting function. Now let's talk about programming. Obviously, if we're doing a very advanced daylight harvesting, we have to have a way to program the settings on the sensor. Everybody has a smartphone in their pocket, 
So to program our sensors, we simply came up with an iPhone and Android app that allow you to change any of the parameters on our sensors. Most of our competitors do it differently. Only one that we found so far that is moving ahead with a remote control. And here it is. As you can see, it doesn't have a familiar screen. It's not very intuitive. And you can imagine there's a pretty good learning curve on this. But we'll at least give them credit for creating a remote control. It's a lot different than what all our other competitors do, which is still making you rely on dip switches, dials, or multiple button presses to change any aspect of their sensor. Now with our smartphone app, we're able to adjust almost any aspect of both the occupancy and the daylight settings. So we can change the sensitivity of the sensor, we can change the foot candle range, we can change the fade rate, just about anything you can think of. Now to connect our sensors to our power packs, we decided not to use wire nuts. We're simply using a low voltage snap-in connector. This allows you to very quickly add sensors, and in fact you can add multiple sensors to our power pack with just simple off-the-shelf splitters. The other thing this does is it avoids complication with the inspector. Anytime an inspector sees something wire netted together, even if they think it's low voltage, they're going to require you to put it in a box. So we avoid that complication and the cost of that. Now, I was going to say that we don't have any competitors that are doing this, but I did recently find one that is offering this as an option that you have to pay for. And here's what it looks like. So as you can see, they're using a proprietary connector that you can't readily get off the shelf, and they have a very, very short cable run. If you wanted to lengthen that cable, which you're definitely going to need to do, your only alternative is cutting that off and now wire netting it all together. Now to lengthen a cable on a BEG sensor, the contractor simply has to use Cat5 cable and off-the-shelf RJ45 connectors, things he typically already has on his truck or can easily get from a distributor. In fact, you can lengthen it with Cat5 to up to 350 feet. And that moves us into wiring. Now this is one of the typical wiring diagrams from our competitors. The first thing you'll notice is in the middle, the red, white, and black wires. Those are the wires connecting the sensor to the power pack. You know, make sure you get them on the right ports. Don't cross those wires. The other thing you notice down at the bottom is that this model requires an additional photocell to be hardwired to it in order to have any kind of dimming or daylighting functions. On the left, they have the option for another relay. But notice that they're using a violet or purple and gray wire as part of that wiring. Typically, purple and gray wires are always used for dimming outputs. So this is a case where it's going to cause some confusion in the field for the installer. And they're looking at the right-hand side, where they've got the switch. The switch is truly not integrated in with this sensor at all. Uh, it's located between the power supply and the load, so they're simply cutting power to the load. This can create a potentially confusing situation for the end user, where one day they walk in and the lights automatically turn on, the next day they walk in and they have to turn the switch to get the lights on. We like to make it much, much simpler at BEG. So here's our wiring diagram. First you notice at the bottom, out of the low voltage side, we have a red and orange wire. That's our low voltage switch input. And again, we can use any momentary switch. It simply wires through the switch and now we can program the functions of that switch. Then we've got our violet and gray wire for our dimming output going right up to the load. And you can daisy chain that between multiple fixtures. Very simple, very easy. That's all for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future.